Now, fortunately for us, God knew that we would have a problem with coveting, which is why he made it one of his 10 commandments. Take a look at what he said in Exodus chapter 20. He says, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servant, his ox or his donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Now, notice there that God starts out with some practical examples like, hey, don't covet your neighbor's house. Don't covet your neighbor's spouse. Don't covet your neighbor's help or their possessions. But then he expands it. He says, or how about this? Don't covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. In other words, don't covet their looks, don't covet their clothes, don't covet their cars, don't covet their newly remodeled kitchen, don't covet their job, don't covet their salary, don't covet their family situation, do not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. You see, you and I, we don't really use the word covet in our modern language today, but when you stop and think about it, for many of us, this is one of the most pervasive sins that we as people commit more often than we'd like to think. And you know, when you look throughout the Bible, this, the coveting is everywhere you turn. For example, Adam and Eve, the reason they ate from the tree that they were not supposed to eat from was because they coveted the knowledge that God had. They wanted it. Or why did Cain kill Abel? Cain killed Abel because he coveted the favor that Abel had with God. Or as we're going to see in our next series, the reason why Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery is because they coveted the relationship that he had with his father. 